Hey, what's up everyone? Rafal here with OPT. And in this video, we are going to be talking about one of the best multi-purpose cameras on the market, the ZWO ASI-183. The ASI-183 has a few different options to pick from that will give it strength in certain areas. But as an overview, this camera is very well-rounded, which makes it great for deep space, planetary, lunar, and solar photography. But first, before we get into the nitty gritty juicy information, do us a small favor and smash that like button. Also, if you want to stay up to date on all the Astro News, gear reviews, and OPT announcements, hit that subscribe button and ring the bell for notifications because we have videos coming out every week and we want you guys to be the best astronomers you can be. All right, let's get to the good stuff. So this is the ASI-183. This camera comes in four different versions. The standard version, both in monochrome and color, and then the pro cooled version, which also comes in both monochrome and color. Now you can tell whether it's a monochrome camera or a color camera by looking at the tag. MM means it's a monochrome camera and MC means it's color. Now, if you choose to go with a monochrome version, then you'll have to get yourself a filter wheel and some filters to go along with it if you want color in your final images. If you're unsure of the differences between mono and color, we highly recommend checking out our video which covers all that by clicking on the link right up here. What makes the ASI-183 an amazing camera and very unique is that it's great for all sorts of astrophotography. For deep space photography, you have the option of getting the pro model, giving it cooling and reducing the noise over those long exposures. You also have a pretty decently sized 21 megapixel 1 inch sensor. Now it's smaller than a micro four thirds sensor, but it really packs a punch when it comes to getting the fine details. You have a really small 2.4 micron pixel size, allowing you to get really deep with the finer details in your image. And with a 5496 by 3672 resolution, that is a great amount of data. At that resolution, you can hit a top frame rate of 19 frames per second if you're looking to do solar or lunar photography. That's faster than most pro-cooled cameras, especially at that resolution, but it doesn't even stop there. Now let's say you want to capture a specific crater on the moon or a flare on the sun, or you're just doing planetary photography. You can increase the frame rate by using only a fraction of your sensor to capture it. This is called selecting your region of interest. You could do this in some programs and on almost all cameras, but the 183 especially will give you some really good results. For example, at a resolution of 3840 by 2160, you get 36 frames per second. At 1920 by 1080, you get 70 frames per second. And at 1280 by 720, you get 103 frames per second, which even at its lowest resolution is giving you a decent image with an incredibly high frame rate. You can get even more than double that at 270 frames per second by dropping the region of interest even further. And all these examples are at a 12 bit depth. You can squeeze more frames out per second by dropping the bit depth down to 10, but if you want our opinion, it's not worth the sacrifice. If you want to learn why bit depth and frame rates are so important, we made a full video going over all the camera specs and why they matter, which you can check out right over here. That being said, it is a good option to have in case you do want those extra frames per second. All versions of the 183 have a quantum efficiency of 84%, which means that 84% of the light hitting the sensor is getting recorded. Now I'd say, and this is totally subjective, but anything over 60% is good, anything over 75% is great, and anything over 85% is excellent. But again, this is subjective, so take it easy in the comment section. And of course, this will all change as technology grows and we get better quantum efficiency on all cameras. All four versions come with a USB 3.0 port for fast data transfer. And if you're gonna be getting the pro version, don't forget to pick yourself up a 12 volt 3A power adapter to power that cooling feature. One thing to note is that the pro version cameras are bigger and therefore heavier. It's not something to be worried about, but it is important to know as you edge your way closer to the weight capacity of your mount. The pro version is about five times heavier than the standard version at one pound, while the standard version is one fifth of a pound. But again, that shouldn't make that much of a difference. And the good news is that this camera can be used on the ASI Air Pro and can be used on all your favorite imaging programs. Anyway, that about wraps it up for this overview of the ZWO ASI 183. If you guys found this video helpful, go ahead, smash that like button, subscribe to the channel, and hit the bell for notifications. Last but not least, if you have any questions about this camera or any astro-related topics, go ahead, leave them in the comment section below. Thanks again for watching, everyone. My name is Rafal with OPT, and we'll see you in the next video. Clear skies.